Well, it's the weekend, Saturday. Um, guess who's back? He's got his Wrecking Crew mask on, which I think is incredibly cool. Um, I asked him where he's been. He, he's, he's being very secretive. So I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe he's got a new friend somewhere. Um, hopefully they're socially distancing. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Maybe he'll open up to me later on. But right now, he's half the man he used to be. I don't know. But today's a really special day. Today is Phil Collins's 70th birthday. And I just thought, you know, I'm just going to visit. This whole channel started because of Phil. Um, when we came off of the Not Dead Yet tour, um, I had a few people, uh, bass players, writing to me, asking me about bass parts, um, saying that they had seen the show and we were like maybe in Sao Paulo or somewhere in Europe and we were in a big giant stadium and they could hear, you know, and, and we had a great front of house mixer, Michelle Collin is an amazing front of house, um, but they said, you know, there were little details that we really, you know, missed out on. Um, and so I decided just to do a couple of videos and show some of the songs with the bass parts sitting on top. So if anybody's come to this channel and didn't really know how this all started, and maybe they're going, God, you know, when you're playing, the bass is a little louder than the, the track. That was the essence of what this was all about, was to show bass parts um, on top of the track rather than within the track. Now, it's not, for me, it's not the way I like to do things. I like to be in perspective where my part's supposed to be, but this was more of a tutorial thing than anything and then it took on a life of its own thank you all so very much for that um, but uh, it, it's one of those things that that was really where this all emanated from and so I thought I would just once again it's been so long since I've played these now um, like this but um, I'm going to do a few of the songs uh, that I did with Phil um, I'm using I think for the most part, I think a couple of these are probably from our um, first Final Farewell tour, uh, doing it live. I, I, I'm hesitant to do things off records because of copyrights and all that. Um, and so uh, I, I'm just wrapping my head around it because between the first Final Farewell tour and the Not Dead Yet tour, uh, a couple of these songs, we dropped a half step. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of try not to think about the way I played them the last time I did them, but the way I did it the time before, which was up a half step. Um, so keep an eye on me, keep me under control here. Um, but I just, just... Um, Something like, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, you. Happy birthday, dear Phil Collins, happy birthday to you, and many more. Love Phil dearly. I've known Phil a long time, and man, I just cannot say enough, sing his praises enough for all of the great work I've been uh, fortunate enough to be involved in with Phil, you know, recording different studios out at the Genesis Farm, all the places in the world I would have never seen had it not been for Phil. Uh, a remarkable artist, a remarkable musician on every level, songwriter, drum, I mean, really drumming is it. That's what I really, was the hardest part of being on the road with Phil was um, standing literally feet away from one of the greatest drummers I've ever worked with. And he wasn't playing drums for most of the show. As great as it was playing with Chester and on the last tour with Nick, Phil's son, there's something with Phil that's just so magical. And not to be playing with him on the tour was always kind of bizarre. And he was one of those kind of guys that if you were walking down the street and you met him not knowing who he was or anything like that, and you somehow ended up in a casual conversation, and you said, you know, so what do you do? The first thing he would say is, oh, I'm a drummer. And he really, in his heart, if you listen to how he scat sings uh, on certain songs and stuff, he sings with the syncopation of a drummer. So I hope he's having a good day today. He's been through a rough period in his life, physically and lots of stuff going on. 
but I'm really hoping that that he's on the on the upswing now and can just really focus on uh, what lays ahead for him. His uh, Nicholas and Matthew are remarkable kids, and Simon and Jody and Lily. I mean, they're all people, you know, f children to be proud of. I mean, really amazing, amazing family. Um, so I'm going to just do a few of these, try to get through them. And this is this is my shout out to Phil. I'm going to start off with um, which one should I start with here? How about something happened on the way to heaven? Back in the other key. So let's see how this goes. Starts off with like this came out of a drum intro in the show that between Phil and Chester did a drum to it, and then it comes out right into the song. So this is how we did it on the first final farewell tour. They've just finished the drum solo.
made it. <laughs> Hadn't played it in that key in a long time, so <laughs> that's kind of weird. Oh, something happened on the way to heaven. That was such a fun video when we did that. We did that out at Brave Film Studios on a big giant soundstage. That's where we rehearsed for that tour. And uh, it was always great. Um, we would really, we spent a, almost a month out there rehearsing because we built all of the sets and did everything. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. One of the beauties of Phil was his attitude was the first audience should get as good a, a show as the last audience. You don't go out there and spend the first two weeks of a tour practicing and learning your show because it's the same money people are spending as the people are spending later in the tour. So those people deserve as good a show as they can get. And that's why we put a lot of time into rehearsing um, uh, uh, for the tours so that when we finally hit that first gig, it was really a fine-tuned machine that we knew what we were doing and there was no, you know, oh, that doesn't work, let's try that on the next show. It was like really had already been dialed in. Uh, but that was also where we filmed the video for Something Happened on the Way to Heaven during those. And that was the one that had, the song was all from a dog's perspective and this really wonderful little acting dog it had done commercials and all kinds of stuff in England was brought in and climbed ladders and did all kinds of stuff. But at one point during the video, uh, the dog comes over and pees on my foot. And then Phil gets a towel. <laughs> and it was so silly because it was a female dog, um, but they had it lift its leg. They had a little wire hooked to its leg so they could lift its leg. And they had a little garden sprayer with some fur on it that they snuck under and then they could squirt water onto my foot to look like peeing. This is behind the scenes magic here of, uh, of filmdom. But um, it, was just, it was just so much fun doing that stuff. Uh, doing videos with Phil was always a joy just because they took it seriously. Um, Paul Flattery and Jim Yukic did all their videos and all the Genesis stuff like Land of Confusion. And man, they were really great at putting videos together in, in production. Um, so, so we were out there rehearsing and did all that stuff. Um, I'm going to do another tune now. I, I always love playing this. Uh, and once again, this is a different key. So I've got to see. see. I think I'll, I'll, as soon as I hit the first note, I'll know if it's the right key or not. This is Billy Don't Lose That Number. And this was always a great song to play live. So let's, let's see how this works out. Conti.
It's so weird in these other keys. You know, it's just up. I'm, my mind is wanting to just <laughs> be back there, but it's fun playing. I love it in these keys. Um, let me see, what else have we got? How about Easy Lover? Let's do Easy Lover in, in another key. Let's see. Um, these songs were all so much fun to play live. God, it was great. Now, you know, crowds just singing along with them and then the energy that Phil would put out and stuff was just amazing God, I just loved it so here we go I mean there's so many songs on the show I could be doing but uh, this one's these are really fun so let's let's grab some easy lover <laughs>
<laughs> one moment in there where I went into the uh, other key that we've been doing. Um, so that's happy birthday, Phil. Actually, the greatest gift for his birthday he gave to me, and that was the chance to play with him, record with him, tour with him, uh, be a part of his remarkable legacy. And I miss him dearly. We talk, I, you know, I'm, I, hope, I hope things clear up so they can do this Genesis tour that they've rehearsed for and they're ready to go and everything's sitting in a warehouse waiting for the moment, whether it's the all clear. So, and then we'll see if there's ever any fill after that, but uh, we'll see, it's cold in here again. It got really cold last night. This room is just so goddamn cold. Um, uh, so, hands feeling a little, little stiff. What are you, how about you? You doing okay back there? Okay, buddy? Okay. Be sure and mask up. Be sure, yeah, there, there it is, right, right? Be sure and mask up. It's really critical, so. Um, so I'm going to, I sent Phil a nice note wishing him a happy birthday and, uh, you know, just all send out good vibes to him. He's earned them. He's definitely one of the, one of the good ones in, in this world. So um, take good care. It's a gorgeous day outside. I'm going to uh, maybe go out and do a few things. I'm gonna, I've got some work to do for some people that have sent me tracks, so I'm going to start writing charts out and figure out what I'm doing on those things and got some book orders in yesterday so I'm going to get on that and it's just every day I seem to be able to fill up with all kinds of nonsense so I'm going to go do that and I'm going to wish everybody a wonderful weekend again remember um, this coming Tuesday is the uh, live stream 3 p.m. west coast time I look forward to seeing everybody and catching up because um, you are an extended family now and uh I care deeply about all of you, and I love the way you all care about each other and interact. So that's really cool. Um, so take good care. Um, you know, just, just weekends don't exist for all the healthcare workers that are in there. Um, I'm profoundly, profoundly, deeply concerned. My brother-in-law is in the hospital with COVID right now, and uh, I'm... Uh, I'm so concerned about his well-being. They're, they, they're talking about keeping him in there for like two weeks. Um, he's not ventilated, but uh, he, he got really sick. And uh, so this is really occupying our, our daily, you know, just our thought process of just sending the best vibes and stuff to him and talking to him a little bit. He gets really fatigued talking, but... Uh, He's a, he's a strong man, so hopefully he'll come through this okay. That's all I care about right now is just his well-being. So. Um, so take good care. Hearts out there to all those people that are at that hospital helping him and all those in other facilities helping everybody else. I'm glad to have my, my man back here with me, keep an eye on things. So <laughs> that's that. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. I'll be back then. So take good care and uh, see you then. Bye-bye.